Hi, this is Robert Stennett, and today we are going to talk about how to do load balancing within Control M. Uh, for the purposes of this demonstration, we're going to focus uh, solely on memory load balance, balancing, since that seems to be a big issue going on nowadays. Um, as jobs, if we get more and more jobs in the system, and they get bigger and bigger, uh, we have limitations how much memory is available. Now, through other mechanisms in Control M, we can control how much CPU resource is used. So currently, we do not allow new jobs to be submitted to boxes that are currently utilizing more than 85% of their CPU. However, for memory, there is uh, some different actions we have to take. Luckily, within Control M, they make this relatively straightforward. However, this is a new concept, and when this is used, it's going to have to be re retroactively applied. However, when applied properly, it can really give you some powerful tools to use to uh, make sure your jobs are balanced appropriately across the different nodes in a node group. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to talk about here is how to actually do load balancing in that. So in this demonstration here, and I will zoom in here, I have created several, whoops, <laughs> I've created several jobs. Now before I get started, let me explain a few things. This environment you're looking at on my screen is my own uh, test environment. Uh, this is not a production or development environment that currently exists here at Carfax. So this is uh, very similar. It's we're running version 7, but you'll notice that some of the things are slightly different. However, the concepts and how you do this will remain the same inside the environment, even though you may have different nodes and uh, more information on your screen than you see here. So here I have a group of jobs. Let's open one up. And you'll see this is just a job called Big Memory Job 1. For the purposes of this demonstration, we're just doing a sleep command, which is basically telling the job to just wait. Most other stuff is pretty normal. You know, We're scheduling this. This runs every day. Uh, our execution, we're sending it to GenBatch, which is a node group we've defined. Uh, we have no in and out conditions. This is independent. But you're going to notice here. Here's where things start to get interesting. So you can see here I have a quantitative resource named MEM for memory followed by the at sign. That at sign is how Control M knows that this is a load balanced quantitative resource. What that means is this quantitative resource exists on every machine that is part of that node group. Uh, so if your node group, for example, GenBatch contains 15 different machines. Uh, whoops, sorry about that. Uh, this will tell it that on every machine out there, there exists a memory quantitative resource. We'll get into this more in just a second. So just remember, when you ever see the, whenever you see an at side following a quantitative resource, that indicates it applies to every machine. So for this job, we put 1,500. Uh, we're measuring our memory in kilobytes here, so I'm saying this job takes 1,500 kilobytes of of RAM, which is about 1.5, uh, I'm sorry, 1500 megabytes uh, of RAM, which is about 1.5 gigs. Everything else is pretty straightforward. We don't have any notifications or anything. So we have five of these jobs. <clears throat> they all are taking up, we all have to find in each job the same thing, where it takes up 1.5 gigabytes or 1500 megabytes of RAM, or memory. So we define a quantitative resource for each. They can all run at the same time. In fact, if we right click on the table there and we say forecast, we can see that these all run. They're, they're all scheduled for every day. And they will all run at the same time. As soon as the resources are available, they will kick off running. Let's switch over to Enterprise Manager now and go to our quantitative resources. So we're going to go to our Tools menu, Quantitative Resources. Just going to leave our filter on. Again, this is a demo environment. So realize that here I've only defined the, the resources I'm using for the demonstration. But here you're going to see something unique you've probably not seen before. That you're going to see MEM, remember our quantitative resource from before, the at sign, this is a load balanced quantitative resource, and then the box names. Not the node group name, but the actual boxes that make up the node group. So here we have two boxes in our gen batch group. 
CTM7 and CTM7 box 2. And on each of these boxes, we define a maximum of this resource of 4,000. In our case, this means 4,000 megabytes, which is 4 gigabytes of memory, which is what each of these boxes have. Now, if we wanted to get really technical about it, down to precision, it would be 4096, because that's actually uh, how many megabytes each box has. But, you know, we don't need to be that precise here. <laughs> so, basically, I've said you have a memory resource in each one of 4,000 megabytes available. So we're going to go ahead. We already defined these. These are defined. These, uh, as we begin down this path, these will already be predefined. As new boxes come online, the memory source will be predefined. So we can close this out. We're going to go ahead and order up all of our jobs now. So I'm just going to select every job in my table here. So I have five big memory jobs. So you know, if we can do a little, uh, if we want to do here real quick. So if I've got Let's start the calculator. If we have four gigabytes of RAM on each one, and again we're just rounding it off, we've said each job takes 1,500. So if I run one job, subtract that, and I have 2,500 megabytes available, I got room for another job. I'll go ahead and subtract that. <clears throat> now I've got 1,000 megabytes or one gig available. I cannot no longer submit another 1,500 gigabyte job to the box because there's not enough memory. Now, what it will do, though, is it'll say, well, if the first box doesn't have it, go check the second box, and go check the third box, and go through the entire node group list of boxes till you can find me a box that has enough memory that I've requested. If there's none in the node groups, or no box and that node group has it, they'll go into a wait state till one becomes available. In this way, you're making sure you never overload the box. So let's go ahead and see this in action. We'll go ahead and order these all up. Get our order IDs. Here they come into our viewpoint. And immediately you can see, as we said before, two jobs started running. Now for this demonstration environment, we only have one node available to our gin batch environment. So if we go in here and take a look, let's look at this log. So we have one job that's running. We'll take a look at its log. And you can see here, remember in our job, let's jump back over to our job definition. So in big memory job one, we only put MEM at. We did not put the box name. But if we go back over to Enterprise Manager, it filled in the box name that it decided to run on for us. It says, I've allocated 1,500 of the memory available. If we go down to one of the jobs that's waiting, look at its log wait resource. So there's not enough resource available. If we do a Y on the job, we'll see it needs mem at. Look, it's not putting a box name. Whatever box becomes available in the no group, it will use 1500. There's none reserved. So it means there's none available right now. Now these jobs will run for about two minutes because they have to sleep in there and then you'll see that the next, the next, the next line will uh, kick off. So some best practices here. In order for this to work effectively and correctly, it is important that as jobs go in, they have an estimate of how much memory they're going to use. A lot of times for your Java jobs, when you're using JVMs and stuff, you know, you specify the JVM size, such as 1.5 gigabytes. That can be put in, again, for this. However, if you don't know, or it's unknown, and developers may not know the information, we need to come up with a suggested default. Uh, usually I suggest 500 megabytes as default, uh, unless the developer perhaps would tell you otherwise. Now, I will, we will say that, of course, again, for this to work effectively, jobs will have to be retrofitted. Uh, this is something that we'll have to work together to do. However, this is a great practice going forward. If you'll notice here, look, we got two, our two original jobs have finished. If we look at the log, and two more, oops, sorry, have kicked off. We still got one waiting. Because remember, we can only run two maximum time. We only have one box available to us in this node group. If we go look at the log of one of the completed jobs, so we can say the resource was allocated. We saw that before. The job ended, and the quantitative resources 
or released, sent back to the pool. In fact, we can even go to our tools quantitative resource menu here, and we can see that right now we have two jobs using up the mem. Now we have this box two, but for our demonstration environment, we don't really have a box two available to us. But it is using that, and there's only a thousand available because we're using three gigabytes or three thousand megabytes of the available memory, which only leaves us with a thousand available. And since this job requires fifteen hundred megabytes, it can't run right now. <clears throat> I hope this demonstration has given you an idea of how we can better effectively use load balance resources. In addition, uh, again, Control-M already monitors CPU for you. Uh, that's something that uh, we can set uh, through workload management policies and other things, how much CPU maximum is taken. Memory and other available resources can be do, done through the quantitative, you know, load balance quantitative resources. Of course, you can make up more um, as you wi wish. You can even create some, maybe you want to create disk space. So you can have a disk at. Um, other load balance resources might include maybe a um, um, number of network uh, bandwidth, uh, perhaps. Uh, it, it's just one of those things. Memory is the most common one used, um, and, and CPU, but again, Control M already manages CPU for you. So memory is really the big one that's used. But if you have any ideas for other ones, please feel free to discuss with the uh, Control M uh, or automation team, and we will certainly uh, help you get those set up. Um, I hope this demonstration has been helpful. If you have any questions, please see anybody on the automation team, and we will be happy to walk through this with you. And um, if you found this video helpful, please let us know as well. Uh, we, we think the videos are... Uh, a great way of showing you guys new information and um, we'd like to get your feedback on them. Thanks a lot. I'm Robert Stinnett. Uh, hope you guys in Missouri and Virginia are having a great day. Talk at you later.